Um, so what do you do if there's no native apps uh, or no native nodes uh, for your app? Um, of course, uh, you can. Not automated. Uh, that, Not accessible. We'll, we'll, no. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll skip that. Um, you can find a community node. There's uh, 563, at least when I created this uh, this thing. Um, th that's plenty, I, I think. Um, there's also uh, more nodes coming uh, pretty much every day. So maybe it's more. You can use the HTTP node, like was just shown. Uh, that's a little bit complicated for some things, uh, but sometimes the API is, is is fine and can easily be used. Depends on documentation, of course, and on your level of, of expertise, which can also develop your own node. Um, you can do this for APIs, which you can also do it for logic. So, for example, if you have a little bit of code where you do uh, some modification of the data or, or stuff like that, um, you can also just create a node for that. One example is, for example, the uh, node that we created to compare two sets of JSON, uh, where you actually just yeah, you push in two data sets and then the comparison is, is revealed. And uh, that was made with an external package, making it very easy. And if you do not have um, the capability or the time to create your own nodes, you can also hire someone like me or one of the other partners or developers that are available uh, to create your nodes. So, of course, always a choice. Now, as you can see, there's uh, a lot of nodes. Uh, you can find them on NPM. Uh, pretty much all of them should be op open because that's NPM, of course. Uh, there's also some duplicates. So, uh, for example, a Discord will probably have more than one node, probably more than five, actually. Um, so then you have to choose what works best for you. Of course, you can just test them out and, and see how it works and if it's, it's doing what you want or even install multiple if one has the one function, the other has, uh, has some other function that you want to use. Um, there's plenty to choose. I get asked a lot um, if uh, they should develop a node for my clients. There are some pros and cons, of course. Um, and it's basically these things. So the usability is, of course, a lot better. If you have just a node, then almost everyone can use it. So you don't have to do all those things like uh, was just shown. It, it makes it a lot simpler for the less technical people. Um, and of course, you can then uh, reuse it uh, and, and, may, uh, and use it easily. Uh, you only have to research the API once. As you have seen with Amadan, um, if you have to search the API if you if you if you need a new functionality, uh, and for example, if it's like three months later, uh, good luck because then you have to pretty much start from scratch. At least <laughs> I don't remember a lot of things uh, three months uh, later. Uh, so if you create a node, you only have to research everything once because you're diving into it, you're creating the node, and everything is in it, right? Uh, of course. Maybe not with all the functionality, but probably with all the functionality that you're actually going to use. And as well, the credentials. Amadan also showed you uh, that you can use predefined uh, credentials. It's very nice to just create your own node, have your credentials in there, and everything works. Um, sometimes an API is uh, fairly annoying with their credentials and then it's very easy to just have it in a node and it works instead of having your <laughs> having your generic credentials even some options are not possible in the generic uh, credentials and then you can add those things in the in the custom credentials as well uh, there's of course some uh, cons uh, yeah it, it takes a lot of time to to create a node uh, depends on, on on your skill level and experience with creating nodes, of course, and also um, uh, how much functionality you're going to put in it. But, of course, you can um, 
uh, just have it uh, be done by someone else. And then it might take less time of, of your own time, at least. Um, and you cannot start automatic directly because of course the node needs to be created. So if you need something quick, then you'll just use the HTTP node um, and, and it will be fine. Um, so the flexibility is also of course an issue uh, or at least not an issue, but uh, if you need to add some functionality, that's that's going to be annoying to um, <laughs> to to add because the guy that created the node has to add it then. Um, so that's a bit of an annoyance, but you can use the HTTP request node as Amazon showed uh, to use at least the same credentials and everything is set up, and then you just have to do that one thing with um, with the HTTP request node. And of course, if it's something that you need to do once and it's not too big of a deal, you cannot have it be uh, put into the node itself. Uh, that's of course a choice uh, you can make. And for the logic nodes, there's pretty much the, the basic uh, or the same uh, pros and cons, but you have um, also the reusability because of course, if you use code and for example, with parameters that you can change and then reuse the code somewhere or whatever, uh, for a less technical person, having them going into the code, changing something, and then uh, uh, moving ahead with that, uh, that's not going to happen probably. Uh, or at least it will only cause issues, uh, or at least in, in, in my experience, uh, which cause, causes more time uh, to fix it and, and, and debugging and stuff like that. So that's very annoying. So for the logic as well, it's very nice to just create a node out of it. It doesn't have to be very difficult, like I just uh, said as well with the JSON compare node. There's simply an external package. Um, you can just make sure that's installed with the node, that you just have the options for that, and then you can just use that. So the uh, JSON compare node, I think, was created in like two or three hours. Um, and that was while also talking to the person I was making it for, um, talking and explaining how it works and stuff like that. It can go very fast uh, and it's very useful. So if you have stuff like that, then it can be worth worth it to, to just create it and then use that. And of course, flexibility again, but yeah, uh, you can use the code note for that and stuff. <laughs> Sadly, um, NADN Cloud doesn't support community nodes. I had to include it. I'm sorry for the NADN team, but uh, I, I, I have to do it. Um, it's fair. We know. We know. <laughs> I, I, I really want to, to promote Cloud more, but yeah, I, I, I'm a big user of community nodes and stuff. So yeah. and, and we are aware, of course, right? So <clears throat> we are having conversations about how how to fix this. There's obviously some security issues around this that's, uh, that give us pause. Uh, however, we are working on a lot of infra infrastructure improvements and uh, with luck, we can actually support custom nodes on cloud later as well. That would be perfect. Because then I can finally push some of my clients to cloud because they don't need their own server. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, well. so how do we get started if you have a node you want to create? I'm not going through the whole thing because there's enough documentation and there's a video of Marcus uh, doing it and everything. Um, so I'm just going to do a few little things and some tips. There is a node starter, which is uh, actually perfect because I've always used it. Uh, when I started creating notes, there wasn't a node starter, but now there is. Uh, so since it was there, <laughs> I've used it. Uh, you can just go to the GitHub page and then use this template. Then you get a copy of the repo. Uh, there's two different nodes in there as an example. So the programmatic style one and the declarative style one. I've never used the declarative style, so I cannot even help you with that. Uh, because when I started creating nodes, it wasn't an option. So I stick with what I have learned in the past. Um, so you basically get this template and then remove the one that you don't want. Uh, so for example, if you want the programmatic style one, then you keep the example node and remove the HTTP bin node. 
After that, make sure to go with baby steps. Uh, so for example, if you, you start with starter, just make sure to delete everything you don't need. So the other node, and maybe if you are doing a logic node, uh, remove the credentials, stuff like that, and change the names of the node and the parameters that needs to be changed, uh, and just test if it works. Because the example node should work uh, out of the box, with the template, of course. Um, so make sure it still works after you change the names and stuff like that, and the logo, maybe. Uh, just make sure it works before you even start building the node itself. Um, and then uh, design the node before you actually start building the, the functionality inside it. Because if, if you just start coding away, you, you might recognize it if you, if you have coded anything. Uh, it's going to get messy very fast. So just make sure you know what to build and then uh, build it. I always start with the UI because then you get a feeling of, of all the things that you want to be able to do with it. it. Makes you also think about those things. So if you are not uh, designing it per se at the start, then the UI will force you to still think about uh, the actual functionalities. And after that, you can just uh, create the functionality like the API calls or the logic or whatever you need. And do not reinvent the wheel. I am not actually a programmer. I used to be a BI consultant, uh, know a lot of scripting and stuff like that, but I'm not a programmer. I can do it a bit. Um, you just grab whatever you need because all the source code is available. Uh, so you can just uh, peek into the code of the nodes uh, that have the certain um, options uh, that you need. So for example, if you need the button with options, with a bit of multiple options that you can um, select and stuff like that, just grab it from a node that you already know that it has it. Um, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And saves a lot of time and hassle and stuff like that. <laughs> are there any questions? Uh, there are. I have two questions here on the list so far. Uh, well, one is a suggestion. Um, let me start with the question. Can I create private community nodes as well? So do you always need to publish them to NPM or are there other delivery you, methods? You don't have to publish them. Uh, you just have to make sure you install them with uh, NADN when you want to use them. Uh, that's a question I always ask my clients. Um, do you want to publish them? And I always recommend just publish them because it's easier to install them if, if you do. And it's also just giving back to the community. Uh, so like 90% just want me to publish them after. Nice. That's really cool. Yeah. And uh, the second one is a suggestion, which I think is interesting, um, that says it would be very nice if you could simply convert the code node into a custom node so that you could use you could predefine inputs At the moment i make do with creating a corresponding workflow and executing it either via http node or execute workflow node so that's kind of an interesting idea so you could like convert it into a, uh, a ready to use or share yeah uh, i actually it. created a node which started as a logger node where you can put uh, parameters in and then it will run an, um, a sub workflow and then you can choose if it returns the data from the super workflow or it doesn't. And you let it not do that if you just log it, because then it will just continue the flow and, and it has logged some data, for example. But you can use that sort of a function node where you can just put the parameters in and then move to a subflow and then grab those parameters, do something with a code, for example. And if you make that smart enough with expressions and stuff like that, you can basically uh, create whatever you want inside that zip workflow. And then it's also not bound to the code node. So it's already doable then? If, if you are not in cloud. Yes, 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 yes. yes. I know. Uh, <laughs> OK. Um, next question, it's a bit long. Um, regarding custom nodes, are there any plans to add JS doc strings to the different interfaces and properties in the N8N base? This can be difficult to understand what the different property values are, et cetera. Um, that's really a question for our uh, product and engineering team. I do not have an answer for you, but we can 
definitely look into that and share more information. One for the forum. Yeah, exactly. Um, unless there is someone from those teams online who can jump in real quick now. No, not even John knows. <laughs> it happens. It happens. You're, st you're still in my shed. <laughs> okay, last question I have here is, is there documentation for the API to custom nodes? For example, node API error is documents apart from in the n8n.io code. Sorry, what? I don't really follow this question. Is there documentation for the API to custom for custom nodes? For example, node API error. Again, let's let's look into that and we can we can post about it on the forum afterwards. If it's if it's about the code that you have to use for the arrows. Um, you can just steal it from other nodes. That's basically how I do it. Okay. All right, that's the questions I have here. Unless there's more, Luis, are we are we all good? Yep, yeah, all good. Those are Thanks. all the ones. Great. Okay. Well, Bram, this is where you do your your pitch for your services. No, I just have it on the screen and you can email me if you need me. All right. Well, everyone already knows you, I suppose, right? <laughs> so 